What's up guys, Court Holder here. You know, with the arrival of Memorial Day, that means we lose all our farm fields that we metal detect during all the cold months. But the good part of that is now we switch over to metal detecting the oldest homes we can find. And this first home we do, man, it was a winner. The house goes back to 1740. There's outbuildings all over the property, smoke houses, spring houses, outhouses, carriage houses, and it sits on 30 acres of all detectable land. Me, Dog Tag Doug, and Rich Van Winkle absolutely killed it with amazing treasures from the time we got there till the time we left. So I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video, the first house of the 2023 summer season, and I will see you at the end. Later. All right, so Rich has the first thing. Hopefully, we're gonna find some stuff here and not get kicked out, Rich. I'm hoping. This one's a tricky permission, but oh. Oh, it's that's so thin. Is it a button? I, I it don't looks quarter size. Yeah, but I don't feel anything of anything. It might even just be nothing. Everything is something. Oh no, it is. It is a button. There's, is it? There's the. Yep, dandy. Yeah, not quite a dandy, not quite but a dandy. quarter size. A dundy. <laughs> Yeah, it's a nice quarter size. I say nice. I mean, it's... It's really thin and old. Yeah. I'm trying to see if there's an image in the front or if that's corrosion. Yeah, I don't see much on it, Rich, but that's a good find. I just had a screaming 43 up by the spring house. I'm going to go see if mine oh, you is. Dig it yet. No, no, you called me as I was getting ready to uh, insert the shovel into the ground. That's fine. Thanks. I got a wheat penny. Oh, I got something really good too, Doug. Okay. Uh, do you know what your, your, your wheatie is? Um, I would only be able to tell you if I was wearing your glasses. All right, well, you can't use them yet because okay. I got something really good. All right. This was way down there, Doug, and it stinks and it's broken, but it's right here. You're looking at it. It doesn't look like much on this side, but it sure looks something cool on this side. Holy crap, look at the size of it. I know, and it's busted. Oh. This might be the biggest one, one of the biggest ones I've ever gotten. Look at oh, that. That's a shame. It's tomback material. Look at all the petals on there. This is one of the biggest crotal bells that we may have ever found. I don't even know what number that would be, like a 14 or something. Did they make oh, look, them look, that look, look, the number is down here. Let me see if I can get the number. No, nope, I don't think no. that's the number. It would have been on the other side, I think. Unless it says... 10. 10. Yeah, that would be about a 10. But you know what's weird is like certain manufacturers, this is a 10, but a different manufacturer, this might is be a, a different size. Right, different yeah. number. So it's yeah. hard to tell. But a massive Is there any bell. more signal in here? I don't like... know. This is what I found so far. No. No. Well, I'm going to look for some more too. This house goes back to the 1740s, 40s. I think. Yeah. And some of the buildings, I mean, look right there, you can see the old spring house. The house is enormous. Look, it goes out of the frame all the way over. This is the original part of the house. On the other side, there's a smoke house. There's and you barns. can see there's... the uh, the add-ons on the other side. Absolutely, from the side. back you can see it. Yeah. So it's going to be an amazing day. Awesome piece of crotal bell there. Oh. I'll look for your wheat date later. <laughs> okay. Because uh, we're going to try to find some older stuff. But good job. <laughs> okay. But it's round and it's hold. <laughs> All right, Doug's got something round and hold. It's not what a is donut. It? Is it a bagel? <laughs> oh. I don't know what it is. Oh, I'm going to bring it to the sun, Doug. It's a dandy button. I can see a it's, shank. It's hold, though. Yep, it sure is. No, I, I said hold. Yeah, no, I'm saying no. it is. I agree. I see the hole. But I also see the shank there. Why would they hold it? I don't know. I'm gonna get my flashlight and see if I see anything on it. But it's a big dandy button. Why they would hold it, I don't know, unless they wanted to save it. And they'd only want to save it if it's special. So let me brush it and we'll get a look at it, Dougie. Could, be, right. a, could be a winner. All right, there's Dougie's dandy button. This is a big mama jama too. And what's great about it is in the center, I can see there's some sort of a hand etching or maybe a hand chiseled design almost looks like a sunburst or a star 
I'll try to put up some pictures of an example of what I'm envisioning. And what's really cool is there is a George Washington button. I think it's GWI 14 that does have a pattern like this, although that has a heraldic eagle in the center and I'm not seeing an eagle, but it's kind of hard to tell. The back has some corrosion on it, but you can see where the shank was. You can see some of the mushroom where it was punched through with a nail, but the front, man, it just looks so intriguing. Why would they hole a button unless you really wanted to save it? If the shank broke off and you wanted to reuse it, you'd put two holes in the center, but one at the top. I think this is something pretty special. I don't know what it is. It's definitely an 18th century button and exactly what we're looking for. So let's see if we can find some more awesome period things. All right, Rich called out a big ooh. I saw him swinging over this. He said it's much bigger than a penny and was hitting a 48. I see an edge. Oh, is that writing? I don't know. If that's writing, it could be a token. I don't know if that was writing or not. I think it's a copper. Well, it's definitely going to be giant. Let's see. Ooh. Get my oh, I see her. Oh, yeah. I see. Yep, it's a braided hair or a matron. Yep. I can see her facing towards your thumb. This is gonna take more work than. Yep, it's a little bit corroded. This ground is moist, so holding the water in, the coppers could be a little rough. We'll clean it up and come back. All right, there's Rich's copper, and it's got some corrosion on it, but look at the relief of the stars going all around it, and the head you can almost even make out the date. I can't quite see it. It might end in a four. You see the dentals too, Rich, going around the outside? Oh, yeah. It's got really good detail. I just think the wet soil put that corrosion layer on, but that's pretty amazing how how much relief is still on it after 200 years. Yeah, those stars stand out. Here's the back. It didn't clean the back as much, but it would say one cent inside of the wreath. But the front is a really nice one. And that's nice too. We told the homeowners we would give them uh, a lot of the stuff that we found, maybe most of it, who cares? Mm. But that'll be a nice one because you found a bunch of them before and I know they're gonna love it. Yep. Along with the crotal bell and Doug's dandy button so far. That's amazing though. Beautiful condition, man. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, Doug gave me the silver sign doing right outside of this old spring house. Let's see. He said he's got silver. Let's hope it's anywhere near the age of the spring of the house. house. I see it. I, I'm certain it isn't because it's with a, looks like a memorial. Oh, there it is. Oh. Uh, actually, I can see a, it looks like Roosevelt facing towards Rich. Does it? You only have to spray it when you realize it's rosy, Doug. Oh, that's true. That's right. I have some sandpaper in my back pocket. <laughs> what year you got on that sucker? I can't see it on my phone, but I bet it's 1900 something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd lay money on those odds. 61. Well. 61, Doug. It's not even wow. as old as you. That's okay. All right, let's get it close. Who's nice. that? Oh, the Amazon guy. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, I'm going to get a close up of it anyway, Doug, because not, not many silver coins have been found so far. No. All right, there's Doug's silver coin, 1961, like we said. Really nice shape, 90% silver. I don't see a mint mark. What's really weird, too, is it was in the hole with a memorial penny, right? Because yeah. 61 was memorial pennies. Yeah. You know, kind of a crossover there where you're getting a silver coin with, I'm going to say, a modern penny. A nice find, Doug, and you were right up against... Well, the, the memorial could... I didn't see the date, but it could be, a, uh, you know, a 60... Well, I said 61. 61. Yeah, yeah. So, but it's funny how like you would associate silver with like at least a weedy, but it doesn't have to be. Yeah. And you're right up against this spring house that probably goes back 200 years before that. I would have liked to have found a... Uh, like a flowing cap. hair silver? Yeah. Yeah, I would cap imagine bust. so. I would imagine so. All right, let's keep looking, Doug. Nice job, though. Yeah. All right, I got a good one here that I <laughs> I dug the plug, flipped it over, couldn't hear it with the pin pointer rescanned it i thought i missed it dug a second plug over here couldn't find it stood up heard it back over here again reflipped this plug over and eventually i got it and it was worth it it's a silver rosy 1952. now i'm looking for coins at this property much much older than this but i'm certainly not going to snub it when you get a silver dime don't see a mint mark but hey, still a nice find, even though it took me much longer to get it for whatever reason. 
and the second plug there were nails so there's a lot of iron around probably from the spring house uh i'm not really sure but nice final add it to the bag and keep on marching i had a scratchy one here doug it was yeah. like in the 40s so i dug a plug it's kind of hard here i flipped the plug over and that's staring at me <laughs> it's just stuck in the plug oh, cool. it looks like it's a silver quarter it is i think it it's looks, gonna be it looks to be a uh, Oh, that's a Washington. Washington. Yep, it's a Washington. 42. It's my second silver quarter, a second silver coin out of the yard. No mint mark, but that's a war Washington. That's right. Say that five times fast. Yeah, war Washington. That was only one time. WW2. <laughs> awesome find, though. I'll clean that up too at the end. Sweet. And I'm working up to that burn pile right there. It, the homeowner oh, okay. said that they lost a gold ring there so i'm going to give it the old once over gold rings are tough because they blend in with bottle caps and there's going to be a lot of trash but on the walk up right here doug i had a 51 it was screaming real loud shallow so i just got the lesh and popped it under the ground and pulled out this oh wow <laughs> that's the first tank we've ever found it's a i think it's a sherman tank or not a sherman tank is it well those are fatter aren't they let me see the gun tour. It's made in China, so it's not even old. <laughs> it's not. That's, I doubt it's a Sherman. The gun tower reminds me of you, Doug. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of droopy. The whole thing is plastic. I'm going to yeah. see. Uh, I don't know. Well, if there must be some metal on there. Well, it's hard to tell. It's got wheels. It feels like the rubber is going to move. Yeah. I'll see if, uh, if they I want think, it for the uh, kids or something. one of the daughters. Uh... Yeah, there's a couple of kids here. It doesn't look that old, and it's made in China. So yeah. pretty cool. We don't find a lot of tanks. Yeah. Nice. All right, Rich just found a harmonica reed. It's falling apart in my hand, Rich. I'm sorry. That's a there's a nail there, too. And I'm only showing it because on this harmonica reed, there's a piece of the outside body right there on my thumb. And there's some sort of a maker's mark on it. Yeah, I might be able to figure it out. Yeah, you can That's almost a... see who made it. And you can sell this to the John Popper Museum. <laughs> He's the only person I know that plays a harmonica. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool though you've never find it with some of the body let alone a maker's mark on it no so we'll have to do some detective work in it oh look at the wood yeah everything you got the whole thing in there that's cool piece of both both reeds the wood some of the plate and even the screw fell out awesome that screw back in all right well i just stood up and this hole right here was where i found that tank i had another signal right here next to it got the lesh flipped that up only an inch and i got this which is my first ever Thomas the Train or Thomas the Tank Engine. Uh, I remember when my kids were little, Ringo Starr was on that show. I don't know if it still exists anymore. I remember there was Thomas and there was Percy and I don't remember them all. I'm hoping to find things much older than that, but still an interesting piece. Don't find a lot of Thomas stuff, so that's a first. All right, Rich called, he's in the back. This, which might be an old smokehouse, I'm not sure. And then over here is the old carriage house, which is the second oldest building on the complex. And Rich, right in between, said he got a silver coin, although not nowhere near as old as either one of them. Oh yeah, it's a silver watch. It's like our fifth silver here. 45? Yep. Yeah, mine was a 42. Doug's Walker was a 43. So a lot of uh, activity in the 40s. <laughs> Man, I sure would like to get back much older than this with these buildings around, Rich. Well, you can clean it up later. It's gonna need a little bit of uh, spraying. Yeah. But yeah, these old structures just to me, look at the steps and everything, just fantastic. And they're everywhere. Everywhere I turn, there's another old building. And there's the house, the front of it. The original section is over to the right. Not that little build-on part, but over here. And you can see the line right there. And this was an addition. More addition, more addition, more addition. So I'm gonna hunker over here on this side in between the building, the original part, maybe in front of the cars, back over in here, and hopefully find some super old period stuff. All right, Rich and I are still doing the, I guess it's the back or the front, I'm not sure. I think it might be a still. 
Rich had a 52 and he said he got a quarter that was shiny. Just popped out like that right there. Yeah. And, and he's now, got he might have another one, he might have a spill. Can I pick this one up, Rich? Yeah. We haven't gotten any old ones. It's a it's another Washington. I'm not complaining, I'm just, you know, wow, we're you know we're right up against the house that goes back to it was 1750 and everything we're finding is 1900s well you did get a large scent and got yeah, the turtle bell that's true all right let's see if he does have a spill or what the heck oh no nope the spill was iron all right well this was your main prize rich that's your what second or third on the day second that's pretty good though if we would have found this at the farm field we, we would have been thrilled but when you find <laughs> it at a house like this you're kind of a disappointed you know <laughs> Well, awesome job. We're going to keep on going. Hopefully we can get on some more 18 stuff, maybe some 17s. Uh, it's going to be a little noisy. The homeowner's mowing, but I just flipped this over. Incredibly shallow, and it might be. It's a mercury yeah. dime. Nice. I mean, I only plucked it with the ledge, which wow. may be two inches. It's like there's an oyster shell right there. Yeah, that's what I saw. Maybe it was an oyster. <laughs> it could be a rock. I'm not sure. That was a screamer. Very nice. I'm going to give this to them, too. They've never probably seen a mercury dime. I know they'll really appreciate it. <laughs> I'll spray it and see if I can get a date. Maybe it'll be an early one. All right, here's my silver dime. And believe it or not, geez, we got six silver dimes on the day, a couple of silver Washington quarters, silver half dollar. But this is the first dime that's not a rosy. Finally on the board with at least a mercury dime. And this one looks like it's 1943. And I absolutely love the black spotty tarnish all over it. Some people hate that. And in my early days, I used to get it right off as soon as I got home. But I kind of developed an appreciation for it because it took decades, sometimes centuries, to get on there. And it makes it unique. It makes it kind of one of a kind. So now I leave all that black tarnish on there. The back, uh, I don't see any mint mark on it. It would be on the bottom left of the feces. <laughs> That joke never gets old. I know it's not called the feces. You don't have to tell me in the comments. But no mint mark. This one was made in Philadelphia. And even though we're going to give the homeowners all, pretty much everything we find, they always seem to love the mercury dimes. So awesome find. I'm going to put it in the pouch and keep going. We only got about another hour until dark. And I'd love to get something a little bit older. All right, Rich, who just pulled a silver Washington out, like right there, moved 10 feet, had another good signal, scratchy was digging down a little aggressively. <laughs> a little bit. And he hit this on the edge. And it's a US half, half cent, he said. <laughs> the last half cent, I remember, I was with you when you found it, it was a classic head. You hit that with your shovel. <laughs> yeah, I did. That was where, where Dustin found the Nova I never hit coppers, full-size coppers, yeah. but I hit half cents some, somehow. I can't see what it is. I see a wreath on it. All right, I'm gonna hand it to Rich. We're gonna clean it up and see what half cent it is but finally some really old stuff this could possibly be 17s let's see what it is i'm not hearing anything on my pinpointer all right there's rich's half cent it's a drape bust it looks like 1803 rich i think so i see 180 i can see part of the liberty at the top yeah 180 would be a drape bust you didn't hit it too bad oh yeah you did <laughs> <laughs> it's got really nice detail on it too, which stinks because a lot of half cents are really slick. Yeah, that was it. Well, that's a great coin. We'll clean it up really good and come back later at the end because we don't want to run out of time. I think this is your first one ever, Dre Bust half cent, isn't it? No, my first half cent I ever found was bent in half. Oh, well, well hey, it's still a good find, man. Congratulations. Yeah. 220 yeah. years old, oldest coin of the day. All right, so over on this little side section, the grass is a little higher, but Doug came in because he saw this old, I don't know what you'd even call it, maybe a, a chimney like a, or... Uh, an old barbecue grill. Maybe like an old burn pit or something. Yeah. And Doug had a couple of cool things. I had a little silver spill. Two, two rosies. Two more rosies to go with my other rosie. So three rosies for Doug today. Yep, here's my other rosie. And a walker. Three, when was the last time you had a three rosy day, Doug? Yeah. Uh, do you see the dates on those? I didn't look real close. So I'll give them the rich. All right. 
And then Doug said he found a sterling okay. golf tee. It looked, I, I didn't know how to describe it otherwise. I believe that's a cigarette that's mouthpiece. Is, is it? Ah. But if you look at the skinny end, all the way at the bottom, I think you'll see the 925. Oh, I see it. Yep, right down there. It's, it's kind of dark back here. I don't know if my camera's going to pick it up. But yeah, I see it. Rich might be right, cigarette mouthpiece end, I'm not yeah, sure. I couldn't figure out what, what else it would be. I The only way I could describe it was a golf tee. A golf tee. What were the dates on his rosies? 50, 59, and 61. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> and I had the Merc too, Doug, so I think we're up to like eight or nine silvers here on the day, which is crazy. We didn't get here till like two o'clock because we were doing <laughs> yeah. that farm field. Wow. So pretty amazing. Well, good job, Doug. Yeah. Uh, Rich showed you this half cent. Wow. All right, I might have one of my coolest spills ever. This was coming up like a 39, but I'm right in between the carriage house and the house. I dug down with the shovel and I pulled up this amazing skeleton key. And you heard me right that it was a spill because as I reached in to grab it, a second one popped out. Look at that. That is fantastic. Oh, wow. Let me see if there's more down there. Never have I found a skeleton key spill. That is sensational. All right, Rich, I kept digging where I just got that two skeleton key. Where do you see what I got, Rich? It's so cool. Oh Boom, look at that. Wow. They might even be sterling. They could be. I'm going to spray them and see. Look at the designs on that. Probably Crazy. off look of an old keychain. Right there four in the same hole it's phenomenal That's i'm gonna spray them and get awesome. a good cleanup of it but we're losing daylight so i don't want to stop yet that is incredible rich let me clean these up later my greatest key spill ever not even close wow <laughs> okay i lied i wanted to keep going and not waste any time but sometimes you just got to smell the roses this is the greatest skeleton key spill i've ever found so i wanted to clean them up so first off, they are not silver. They are silver plated and you can see a lot of the plating chipping off. Originally, I thought I had two sets of the same key, but you can tell from the keyhole placement that they are not the same at all. They're totally different. Some of the holes up here you can see are much smaller on this than they are on this one. And also this one is short, long, short, long. So there are four different keys, although very similar design. These two I was able to tell go to a 1920s Brunswick phonograph. The top of the cabinet would open up with this short key and the shorter key would open up the little side compartments that actually hold the albums. These two keys with the flower in the middle, I have no idea what they came off of. I couldn't find an exact image online. All four have the holes that I cleaned out. What an amazing little find. I can't really explain it unless you do this hobby, but to find one skeleton key in an amazing day, but to find four in the same hole, that is absolutely nuts. Man, I love it. Oh man, what an awesome spot that was. And a funny story, when Doug and I first drove down the driveway and knocked on the door and asked if we can detect the yard, they told us no. They were very nice, but they disliked their privacy. But after talking to them for a half an hour or so, they relented and said, all right, you guys are already here. You can hunt the yard. And throughout the day, we included them in the experience. We showed them all the finds. We gave them almost everything we found. At the end of the day, they said, you guys can come back again. And that's what we're always hoping for because it was obviously never hunted before. We found nine silver coins on the day. Now, most of which were 1900s, but it was a sure sign this property had never been detected before. Doug had that amazing dandy button that kind of had that George Washington inaugural vibe to it. Rich with the matron head large scent had that super high relief on it. I think the date was 1826, if I remember. I got that huge number 10 Tomback Crotal Bell, Pedal Bell as some people call it, goes all the way back to the late 1700s. Dougie got the silver cigarette mouthpiece. That's Victorian error with that scarce 835 silver marking on it. Of course, Rich got the 1809 last year drape bust half cent. He gave it a little love scratch with his shovel, but what an amazing coin that was. And then of course, the amazing first time I had ever found it, the Thomas the Tank Engine. Now I'm only kidding, the four skeleton key spill. Each one uniquely keyed out, totally complete, with tops fancier than a Baywatch rerun. 
It's houses like this that inspire me every single week to go out, and I can't wait to see what other ones we land on this summer. And of course, if you guys need a metal detector or a pinpointer or anything hobby related, shoot me an email, quarterhoarder, yahoo.com. Just let me know where you live and what your budget is and what kind of terrain you plan on hunting. Woods, fields, houses, parks. I'll help you pick out the best machine for your budget so you can get out and find some of the incredible things like we do every single week. I'm telling you, you're going to love it. It's a hobby of champions. Otherwise, thanks for watching, everybody. Happy hunting, and I will see you on the next one. Later.